So I've actually been looking around for a little palette cleanser. Something to have a little bit of fun, make everyone laugh, hopefully, and wash a little bit of this Magic the Gathering drama out of our mouths. Because after all, this channel is not intended to cover magic drama. It's just hard not to when you're literally at the center of it. Um, so a lot of you have actually been sending me this video on Twitter, uh, which I appreciate because I, it's always good to get inspiration from all of you. And this is uh, a, vi a video um, on a YouTube channel that's unironically called The Think Tank. Um, but we'll get to the actual video in a second. The first thing that jumped out to me was basically, wow, this channel has nearly 1.5 million subscribers and they struggle to break five to 10,000 views on most recent videos. Um, Hell, I'd venture to say, to be honest with you, that this video uh, will do probably that or a little bit more with uh, about 2% of the total subscriber base of this channel. The second, the second thing I noticed um, was that I assumed, well, the second thing I thought was that they must be buying their subscribers because how do you have 1.5 million subscribers and literally no viewers whatsoever? Um, but their social blade tells a little bit different of a tale. Uh, so then I went on to assume that this channel had been in fact purchased from someone else, but found no evidence of that. So I started to figure, geez, um, they must have gotten these subscribers somehow. So I took a look at their most popular videos um, and things started to get a little bit more clear. They offered some hard hitting uh, reporting on topics such as forced to masturbate for college class and Forced to shave vagina uh, at beauty school. Uh, five tattoos even tattoo artists refuse to do. Uh, public sex caught on tape, not safe for work. Shocking sex practices from around the world. And worst Instagram selfie fails, not safe for work. And of course their video uh, depicting a woman um, either, you know, cl clearly pleasuring herself, has 52 million views. Uh, so uh, after getting an idea on how this channel actually built its subscriber base, uh, with a little bit more digging, it became clear to me that uh, probably most of you already know that this is in fact a rebranded channel that is a part of the Young Turks Network. Um, uh, only a company with large sums of donor money could continue to run a channel with two, three, or even four uh, employees and regular daily videos, multiple videos. Uh, only a channel that has financial backing could continue to exist, pumping out sh spicy shit nuggets twice a day, every single day. Uh, it's it, it got rebranded back in 2015, um, what can only be described really, in my opinion, as an effort to, uh, quote, get the eyes of those darn kids that are always on that pesky lawn that the, the Young Turks are trying to maintain. Uh, so now that, unfortunately, I was last to the party in discovering this, um, I felt like I had a pretty, a pretty good aha moment there because the, the video had a familiar stink on it and I couldn't quite place it. Fortunately, for cringe connoisseurs such as myself, uh, they continue to push out videos, um, again, two or three times a day, and they actually dropped a real doozy uh, last week entitled, College Men Are Suing Rape Victims for Defamation. Uh, uh, first of all, um, if you were in fact a rape victim, then you probably aren't getting sued for defamation. Um, the first part and the second part seem to contradict each other, but of course, who am I? Um, now, clocking in at 2,400 dislikes and just 147 likes. Now, that's not 147,000 likes. That's not even 14,700 likes. That is 147 likes compared to 2,400 dislikes. And funny little tip here, actually. Um, you're going to learn more in this next 20 seconds that you would have ever learned watching this 10-minute video by uh, the Young Turks. Uh, if you ever had, if you've ever been wondering, ever since YouTube switched to the 1K, 2K like-dislike ratio, once you pass 1,000, it kind of rolls everything up. 
If you ever wondered how to actually figure out what the actual likes and dislikes of a particular video are, you just need to hover your mouse over the dislike bar and it'll give you the actual breakdown. So there you go. The young tur turds <laughs> brought some knowledge and uh, let's get back to this. So just to take, um, uh, uh, let's just take a peek at some of this hard hitting reporting by the Young Turks crew on um, this well-researched BuzzFeed headline reading um, mental giants have to offer us. Let's have a little bit of fun. John and Hannah here. And here's a brief look at what Think Tank's all about. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. <laughs> all right, okay, 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 okay. We'll get to it here. So with the Me Too movement, a lot of women are feeling inspired and empowered to come out about their sexual assault claims, especially on college campuses, which is great. It's funny you chose that word, inspired. Uh, now, I think anybody who assaults anybody and especially you know someone who commits sexual assault should be punished for that crime now i view it as more a traditionalist uh, the definition of that word is a little dicey to me in 2017 going on 2018 but the problem is that you are correct people have been inspired to come out and make claims of sexual assault Imagine my shock when not every one of those claims has an ironclad case behind it. And if you've been following anything with this cancerous Me Too campaign going on, once you've been accused, you are guilty in the court of public opinion. What possible option does somebody have to deter others from making false claims of such a horrendous crime other than to counter sue for defamation, assuming they're innocent. Um, but we have seen more women coming forward, which is amazing. But recently, we've also seen an uptick in men counter suing for defamation. I know it's a small thing, but why is she so out of breath? <gasps> Does she not know how to breathe? Anyway, why is it amazing? that women are coming forward and sharing their story of alleged sexual harassment. I don't think that's amazing. And furthermore, I don't think a crime should be reported on Twitter. That's my number one problem with this stupid Me Too movement is it's 100% about attention. And where do you think people might be seeking a little attention? Maybe they're just a number in a crowd of tens of thousands of students on campus. And maybe, just maybe, some of them see this as a way to get a little attention. It's not as though we haven't seen this time and time again. And maybe there's just a rise in false claims. That would make sense. It's correlated to said claims of defamation. Now, it's really difficult to track how many defamation lawsuits really come from these campus uh, sexual assault cases. But we're going to report on them anyway. But a few years ago, there was about 5% of uh, one particular lawyer's cases came from sexual assault accusers facing a defamation suit. But now it's a little bit more than half. All right, that is a huge, that's a 45% uh, increase. increase, which is insane. You know what's insane to me? It's how you literally don't understand math at all and how you could have so many wrong statements packed into a short 20 second clip. One, okay, a lawyer had 5% of their cases go to roughly 50% of their cases in terms of defamation over sexual assault. Now, clearly you don't understand how percentages work and I'm gonna demonstrate that again in a second here, but isn't it possible that this lawyer went from having 10 cases a month to having two. It's called the denominator. And it's kind of important when you're referencing percentages. You also claim that going from a 5% ratio of your cases to a, let's say, 50% 
is a 45% increase. Now, you are on what you might call a news network, but for most of us who do and understand basic mathematics, let me break it down for you. If you have five apples, well, let's make it easy. If you have a hundred apples and you go to a hundred and forty-five apples, that is a 45% increase. Not going from 5% to 50%. That is 45 percentage points, not a 45% increase. Because one, obviously, if somebody is falsely accused, like we know that their name can be dragged, but that number is so, so small. In comparison um, to actual I not yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's I think it's like about 2% or something like that are actually false accusations. First of all, what the hell is this guy even doing in this video? He literally never talks except to affirm the Wamans. So, okay, let's use your percentage by the way. You say, well, <laughs> it's only about 2% of people that are falsely accused of rape. Well, the, the number you're referencing the Betsy DeVos number, DeVos number, is actually the range of two, between two and 10%, okay? So I think a fair claim would be to pick a number somewhere in the middle. Let's say 6%, all right? So you're saying, well, it's no big deal if, if 6%, six men out of 100, are guilty, uh, are, are, are publicly uh, made guilty, publicly shamed for basically being a rapist because that's how society works. You don't get to ever unring that bell for those six men. You are always remembered for that. And I think there is a lot of counter information out there that would say that number, especially in 2017, late 2017 during the Me Too campaign, is exceedingly higher than 2 to 10%. But I guess it's just not important to you because eh, it's only at most 10 out of 100 men that get falsely accused, so no big deal. Well, I assure you, it's important to them. Um, but the, the most important part of this is, is that it could dissuade women com from coming forward, right? If you're a college student, you don't have money. You don't have money right. to deal with a lawyer and all of that kind of stuff, and so, if you are thinking about coming forward with your sexual assault uh, or your rape or whatever and coming forward about that, you might need to start taking into account if somebody's going to counter sue you for defamation. So like, right. So like totally, if you're like going to totally accuse somebody of rape, like you should totally like maybe have to think it through or something like, I, I gosh, you know, geez, it's not like accusing a man of one of the absolute worst things you can accuse them of. Maybe, maybe, you know, like... Geez, you might have to think about the repercussions of being incorrect about that. What a shock. Oh, it, it, it's compounded twofold, Hannah, because not only do you have the emotional stress of what you've experienced mm. being, being assaulted, mm -hmm. but now you have to worry about a financial stress. Right. Which is, for a college student, at any university, it's it, finances are tight, right? You know, and and so it just adds. And then you have these for, lawyers. For who, me, finances are tight. I mean, for everybody, everyone, finances exactly. Are tight. He finally speaks, and this is what we get. So, like, yeah, geez, I mean, uh, being able to accuse people falsely of rape is a rich man's game. I mean, I don't even understand. I mean, <laughs> to accuse somebody of this crime is a lifelong brand for a man. Let's face it, if a woman gets accused of sexual assaulting, sexually assaulting a man, she's revered. If a man gets accused of it, he is forever branded some kind of disgusting monster. So I'm sorry if I don't care if a few people have to think clearly and think things through before they accuse somebody of one of the worst crimes that a man can be accused of. Thanks, Think Tank. This is a great video. I hope everyone else out there enjoyed it. I sure did.